Uh, my name is Charlie Greenbacker. This is Susan Fenn, my friend and coworker. And we're going to talk to you today about fusing structured and unstructured data together for geospatial insights in Lumify. And we'll unpack everything we mean by that over the course of this talk. So first of all, what is Lumify? Uh, as you can see, Lumify is an open source big data analysis and visualization platform. Uh, it's an open source project to build that, uh, started by uh, and mostly contributed by Altamir engineers. By open source, we mean open source Apache license. The code is all up on GitHub, so please feel free to uh, download it and check it out. <clears throat> Excuse me, I got a frog in my throat. Um, so a couple key concepts uh, to know to understand what we're talk talking about with Lumify. We follow a graph-based uh, knowledge model uh, in Lumify. So essentially, you start with the ontology, which is the customer or the user organization's data model. It defines uh, the different things and relationships that they want to be able to model in their data. So the ontology really consists of definitions of entities, relationships, and properties. Entities are any thing uh, that you want to model in your data, so essentially the proper nouns, people, places, organizations, events, transactions, those sorts of things. Uh, relationships are links between entities. How are those entities related? So those are the edges uh, on the graph. Uh, relationships can be are between different types of entities, so a person can be a leader of an organization, one person can be related to another, that sort of thing. Properties are essentially any met metadata about the entities or relationships. So a person can have a first name, a last name, uh, perhaps a uh, employment relationship uh, has a start date, end date, that sort of thing. And then the graph is the collection of all of the instances of those entities, relationships, and properties that are defined in the ontology. So the on ontology is the abstract definition. And the graph is the collection of all those uh, instantiated or instances of those things. So what can you uh, use Lumify to do? Uh, lots of different things. Uh, first, you might want to start by searching your data. Uh, so we do a, a, a search here with the keyword trafficking. Uh, those first three results sets there, document, video, images, those are the raw files that were ingested by Lumify. Uh, the things below are those entities uh, that were extracted and resolved either by automatic machine processes upon ingest or perhaps a human user went along and added things, changed things, that sort of thing. Uh, and we're not just, right here, we're not just searching by keyword. We're going to constrain that by a couple of filters, a couple of uh, facets in our search. Uh, first thing we did was uh, constrain the results to only give me results that have a geolo geolocation associated with that, um, that fall within 1,000 kilometers of that point uh, in space, and then also have a date associated with them between those two points right there. So faceted uh, full text search. Um, people also use uh, Lumify to do a lot of link analysis. So perhaps we start by adding a single entity onto our graph. So we're going to add this person here. Maybe we want to start exploring the different items that this person is related to. So we start to build it out a little bit. We see the phone number that this person owns or, or has. Uh, now we're, we have a company on there. We're going to create a relationship between those two entities. So this person owns that company. Uh, we spend a little time building out that graph. We get to this point where we have several more people. Um, we have the companies that they're associated with. Perhaps those companies have locations. We can Maybe we have phone call records and, and different things like that. So we start to build out that graph of knowledge and visualize it that way. Uh, we do a lot of work with different kinds of multimedia, especially unstructured data, things like um, text documents, images, video, audio files, that sort of thing. What you're seeing here is uh, the contents of a document after it's been processed by Lumify. Uh, so different uh, machine learning tools and also humans have gone through and, and extracted and resolved certain entities. So we have some people on there, places, locations, organizations, even temporal references uh, that have been sort of elevated from beyond just a simple word in the text. For example, uh, Sierra Madre Mountains is now linked to an actual geospatial entity for the mountain range. Uh, we do a lot of stuff with geospatial. Obviously, this is what we're here to talk to you about today. Any data that you have that has some sort of geotag associated with it, uh, that can be aggregated and viewed uh, in Lumify. We can work with um, any, any mapping system that supports open layers. Typically, we use uh, Geo, or, uh, Google Maps just for the demos, and we'll get into this a little bit. So where does that geospatial data come from that we use in Lumify? We really work with three different types of sources of geospatial data, structured, semi-structured, and unstructured data. So um, structured data is the sort of you know, stuff that, that comes pre-tagged, sort of the traditional geospatial data, um, something that, that already has uh, a coordinate uh, assigned to it. So that can be something like um, you know, downloading tweets that have, that have been GPS tagged, or perhaps you have 
a database of records or sensor logs that have some sort of geospatial data or GPS data associated with it. Obviously, we can work with that. That's plottable on a map right out of the box. We focus a lot of time and energy working with semi-structured and unstructured data that we need to do some work to extract and enrich geospatial information and associate it with that data. So an example of semi-structured data would be a spreadsheet. Uh, perhaps it has columns for city, country, or city, state, and country. And those are just, just words, just strings, uh, just text in those fields. And you know, it provides some structure. It's telling us what those locations are, but we have to do some work before we can you know, assign that to a point in space that we can then put on a map. Uh, unstructured data, again, that, those are text documents like emails, news reports, um, Wikipedia pages, whatever. We need to do some work to identify the places mentioned in that text, uh, disambiguate them, resolve them to gazetteer records to allow us to put them on the map. Uh, the way that we work with that uh, semi-structured and unstructured data is with a tool called Claven, which is an open source geoparser. A geoparser is a tool that essentially takes unstructured text as input, so again, your emails, news reports, whatever, it's going to automatically find any of the location names mentioned in that free running text, so cities, countries, mountains, rivers, whatever, any named location. And it's going to resolve those names um, to gazetteer records. So text comes in and, and pins that you can put on a map come out. Okay? Uh, so really what we're doing here, or what Claven does, is uh, geospatial entity resolution. We find names of places in text and we turn those into gazetteer records. Uh, the real magic of Claven and other uh, geoparsers like Claven is it, it does disambiguation of ambiguous place names. So we call this the Springfield problem, right? If I come up here and I tell you that I'm from Springfield, you're going to think, which Springfield is he talking about? So Claven solves that Springfield problem, uses the context of the document to figure out which, which Springfield, for example, the author is talking about. Uh, it's very versatile. It's an open source project. Uh, the Lumify team actually just uh, added a new feature to Lumify to really help it handle those uh, that semi-structured data, those multi-part location names that you might find in a database or a spreadsheet or whatnot. And that's going to be contributed back to Claven uh, very soon. And to find out more about uh, Claven, please go to uh, claven.io. If you're interested in exactly how Claven works, it's magic. Uh, it's really a combination of machine learning, natural language processing, and heuristic AI algorithms. Um, if you were at Location Intelligence last year, you would have heard me give a talk about Claven and go into more detail about how it works. Uh, but if you missed that talk, again, please go to uh, claven.io. So I'm going to jump in uh, right now and do a, a demo of Lumify running on AWS. Um, so this is, um, here we go. So Lumify is a, um, a web application. There's nothing for the user to install, download, run on their machine. It all runs in the magical cloud. So I'll just log in here. Okay, so this is what the user will see when they first log into the system. This is the workspace, kind of the blank slate where they will interact with their data, uh, search, explore, uh, do some analysis and visualization. Um, maybe the first thing I want to do is do a quick search. I'll do a wildcard search just to see everything that's loaded into my system. Lumify will scale to big data, but for this demo, it's a relatively small data set. So I did a wildcard search, just tell me everything that you have. Uh, under raw, those are the original files that were ingested up by Lumify. So we have 57 documents, 174 images, different video and audio files. And then everything else, the locations, the people, the contact info, those are all different kinds of entities that have, that have been extracted either by the system itself automatically or by a user coming along and, and doing some work. Um, so maybe you know, I can click on here. I have 478 countries. I can see those countries uh, here in the search results. I can roll down to just look at the countries. And you know, if I have uh, flags of those countries are displayed there. Maybe I just want to look at the states. I'll click on one of these here. Um, this, is a, this data set is about uh, drug trafficking, so there's a lot of Central and South American locations here. Uh, so this is Estado de Sinaloa. It's the state of Sinaloa in Mexico. I can click on it to bring up its baseball card, and I can see the different properties of it. I can see the different documents that it's mentioned in. Um, here's a document right here that I can look at. Uh, this shows the, uh, really a preview of the contents of the document you saw on the slide before. Um, anywhere the, the document is bold, uh, like Los Angeles here, United States and Mexico, I'm seeing those entities that were extracted and resolved. Most of these have been done by Claven, so I can see, you know, it doesn't just find Sinaloa here, there's you know, Colombia, Peru. That's all been done automatically by Claven uh, going in and finding that. Uh, but maybe I want to do a different search. Maybe I want to add a filter like I showed before in the slides, and maybe I want to constrain my results, not to look at all the, you know, all possible results, but I'm just going to constrain it here to uh, let's see, um, how about 500 kilometers um, around that point, which happens to be in Sinaloa. 
And now I only have 11 results here, so I can see the 11 results that all fall into that, um, in, fall into that um, result. So I can just, again, select one of these here. Culiacan is the capital of Sinaloa. Bring up the results and see, oh my gosh, you know, there are you know, two or three dozen companies that happen to have headquartered or be headquartered in this city, so maybe that is something I'm interested in. I can grab all those results, drag and drop them onto my graph here. Um, and so, you know, in the graph view, it really only makes sense to look at things when you have connections between the entities. So right now, I don't have any connections between these results, um, so maybe I want to switch to the map view and look at things uh, geospatially. Um, so I switch over to the map, and I can see the, the geospatial distribution of that uh, data that I just uh, searched for. Um, it, you know, really what we're doing here is pretty simple. We're just putting pins on a map. Um, and one of the things we do is that if there's a lot of pins right close to each other, rather than have them literally on top of each other so you can't see where they are, you know, we've all seen that in uh, different systems, we roll those up into sort of mega pins. So as I zoom out, I can see there's six things sort of going on in there. And as I zoom in, those mega pins peel out to their individual pieces until they go all the way, uh, all the way down. But maybe I don't want to search from the search box. Maybe I want to search directly from the map. Uh, I can go create a new workspace here, call it my map, add it, uh, and now I've got a blank slate, another blank slate to work from, uh, and I can do things right from, the, right from the map here. Let me zoom in to Arizona. Maybe I want to see what's going on in Arizona, so I'll click on the map, say load results within radius, kind of put it in the middle of Arizona and drag that out until it roughly covers the, the state of Arizona and click again. Now Lumify is searching its data holdings directly from the map. I've drawn that sort of radius. And now it's re uh, returned everything that I have here. Again, I can zoom out. See there's a bunch of stuff going on south of Phoenix. Uh, as I zoom in, I can see there's a whole bunch of stuff going on along Interstate 8 here. Again, maybe that's interesting to me as an analyst. I can click on these things and you know, bring them up uh, along the way to start uh, exploring more detail. So that's just a really, really quick demo. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more. Oops. OK. Uh, if you're interested in seeing more, please come see Susan and I uh, afterwards. We'd be happy to give you a, a demo uh, in more depth. So I'm going to hand it over to Susan now for the rest of the talk. I'm going to move the mic down because I'm not as tall as Charlie <laughs> is. Um, a few people are. <laughs> so I'm going to talk about who can actually use Lumify. How can Lumify help a typical user? Any user that is trying to do any analysis work or investigation type of work, um, Lumify is beneficial to them. Since we're in the DC area, obviously intelligence analysts. Intelligence analysts can use Lumify to fuse that structured data and unstructured data together to start seeing different links within um, their data set. Police investigators can use Lumify to start distangling that criminal network or even to find those hidden connections between, for example, gangs or cartels. Financial analysts can use Lumify to um, start finding financial patterns to maybe detect identity theft or fraud detection. And lastly, our catch-all the research staff. Those are your paralegals, your historians, your scientists. Those, those type of people have a lot, abundance of data. Lumify, they can st use Lumify to start digging through their data, visualize that link analysis, or even the geospatial content of their data. Those are just a few types of people that can benefit from the uses of Lumify. Like I said earlier, anybody who's trying to do investigation or any type of analysis work can benefit from Lumify. So here's a very abstract view of our technology stack. Um, we see some pretty well-known open source products like Hadoop, Elasticsearch, Accumula, Apache Storm. Secure Graph is a graph, graph abstraction layer we built on top of Accumula to utilize Accumula's cell level visibility and their fine-grained access control. The top layer um, are open source analytic tools that Lumify currently uses. We've already talked about Claven. There's OpenNLP, NAD Extraction, OpenCV, which is a Facial detection tool, Tesseract is an OCR tool, Sphinx is an audio transcription tool, and FFmpeg is video encoding. So that concludes our presentation on Lumify. Um, you can find more information about Lumify at our website, www.lumify.io. Recently, we just set up a demo instance on AWS that people can go and log in and start playing with um, Lumify. And that's at try.lumify.io. We're also on Twitter. That's our Twitter handler, at Lumify.io. And like Charlie spoke earlier, all of our code source is on GitHub. You can go, feel free to go on GitHub and look through our code base um, or even um, contribute to the open source community of Lumify. Thanks. Thanks. So much. Thanks. I think you came out. Thank you.